the COVID-19 pandemic, Nigeria's unemployment and fragile economic growth problems would worsen. This makes it very essential for the government to adopt frameworks and policies to reject economic growth and employment. I am now joined by the CEO of Nigerian Economic Summit Group, Laoye Jayola. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Certainly. One of the deliberations at the meeting just held was the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on key sectors of the economy and the optimal policy response to the current and looming challenges. Can you bring us up to speed on this? Well, the first thing we did was to look at, you know, you recall that as NESG every year, we have a macroeconomic outlook. And we're done a three scenario analysis predicting what we think the GDP would do. Unfortunately, COVID-19 and the sharp drop in oil did a significant impact on that. So far, we have to revise it. And revise it and show that we are going to be in recession for about a year or two, thereabout, and probably come out uh, in three years' time. Mm. But what we then did subsequent to that was to look at the implication of that on the sectors of the economy. So we look through all the 42 sectors of the economy, look at the ones that are their sensitivity to changes in FX, changes in interest rate and inflation, and then the ones that are fastest growing. But evidently, for us to be able to come out and come out very quickly, we we'll need to pay attention to agri, an agro-allied industry. We need to pay attention to health and education, pay attention to our construction, ICT, creative industries. These are the industries that we think are very, very crucial and important. And happily, this is what they are looking at at the economic sustainability meetings. Uh, but how you get to implement all of this thing is really more important than just going to those sectors. Because looking at the history of Nigeria, these are these are sectors who have all have been talking about that the things we need to do to add value or addition to increase job and lift up people out of poverty. But this, they're not new. Unfortunately, the modalities for implementation has been very poor. Now, while the impact of the pandemic is transmitted to the economic sectors through changes in aggregate demand, constrained capacity utilization, and falling capital accumulation, government responses will play a very significant role in dampening this impact. What has been the NESG's assessment of government response so far? Well, the government, the government, the government has made some effort, but given the, the, the wide impact, it's not sufficient. Well, what the government has done is, I mean, you know, they've done a bit of palliatives. They've done a lot of concession in interest rate. They've made available some loan facilities to key sectors of the economy. But, you know, ability to do much depends on what we do, either through borrowing, encouraging domestic domestic mobilization of resources, and making ourselves very attractive to available funds to come to us. It's, it is still scratching the surface. It is not as deep as we want it to be. And what we need is a matter of urgency, a matter of coordination, and a matter of uh, you know, dealing with it very quickly. I mean, I, I don't want us to have the same idea we had in 2016, when we went to a recession and we just thought that, well, all were rebound. All did rebound, and 2000 and 2017, we came out of a recession. We don't think that is going to be the attempt this year. We don't think this is going to be a V-shaped recession. Mm. We think this yeah. is going to stay with us for a while. And then they, 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 uh, there's insufficient agency yet. That's what we think. Now, what policy suggestions have the NESG preferred to ease the impact of the pandemic on the economy? First and foremost, of course, the first thing you do is to ensure that you do, you do palliatives to the vulnerable people which they are doing, which is not well, still coordinated because we are short on the area of data. So one of the things going forward will be that how do we get the appropriate data, how do we harmonize data to make it work. Secondly, is to ensure that we don't make things tough to people. Government needs revenue, no doubt, and one way to get your revenue is taxation. But of course, you don't tax a dying problem, a dying industry. Since a lot of those sectors are going to lose money and losing resources, some of them have more work for now. Mm -hmm. MSMEs have challenges. So first, how do you ensure that you alleviate the sufferings of those people? But more importantly, how do you then ensure that you make the environment for doing business very well? I must commend, for instance, little as uh, reducing now dark uh, money for, for, for registration by 85%. People think it's little, but it's not little. When you look at all, the, all of the MSMEs, that needs approval to get their products come out. So, you, you, you see, 
all of those things are important. But more importantly, there are three devils who think the NEA is, the NEA just believes strongly that yeah, this is the right opportunity for government to work on. The issue of the fact that all our foreign exchanges, we need to, all the multiplicity of exchange rates should, uh, exchange rates should stop. And that's one of the conditions that I'm aware that IMF gives and Nigeria made a commitment to do. Secondly, we must ensure that we don't do anything to inhibit foreign exchange flows because if there are sufficient foreign exchange flow, both businesses will have problems. Mm -hmm. Then, and, 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 and thirdly, we think this has afforded us the opportunity for us to deal with the issue of subsidy, oil subsidy, once and for all. I mean, we don't have the money. Money you don't have, you don't then begin to go and borrow money to give people. Before now, what we should do is that we don't have enough money, but we'll borrow money mm -hmm. by creating bonds and debt and distributing people that want to just enjoy fuel. I think this is the opportunity for government to clearly and very, very clearly make the issue of uh, subsidy of, of fuel gone. And I think third, which is very important, is to work around power sector and ensure that there are right prices paid for power so that we can have power across, across, across the spectrum of people. Because if you have power across, people that can now work for longer time or longer time or period, more important than that, if you then layer this around the Greek area, we we'll have reduction in our Greek losses, and then people can then talk about how do you move from crop production to value addition. So these are very crucial things, but they must be done in an integrated basis. Thanks. But more important, the NLG is told government that this is not a federal reaction alone. It has to be done on a national basis. The entire Nigeria should work together. Thank, thank you so be much. As a result of time, sir, sorry, but as a result of time, that's all we can have for now. Thank you so much for joining us, CEO thank NESG. You. Thank you so much. And that's all on business news at this hour. I am Irene Ubani.